You want to become an hacker and you don't know how? Then this video is for you. In today's video, I will show you my 5 step process to become an ethical hacker. So without further ado, let's get to it. Becoming an ethical hacker is no easy task because there's a lot of information out there and sometimes it can be overwhelming. So after an extensive research, I created a plan that I'm following myself and this is the plan that I will uh, share with you so uh, you can uh, maybe adapt to yours if you have one or uh, begin somewhere like I'm doing. So the first step that I recommend is to learn about how computers and networks work. And this is because if you know how these things work, then you will know more easily where to search for weaknesses, okay? So, if you understand how data travels through a network or how a computer processes information, you can spot and exploit security vulnerabilities that others might miss. Now, my plan, and of course you can make it yours if you want, uh, is to learn about file systems, networking protocols like TCP, IP, uh, and common network devices such as switches, uh, routers, and firewalls. It's important also to know uh, what's the OSI model and a lot of other things. So make sure to make a, a search uh, about network and learn as much as you can because it's important, okay? Now, I've been learning about network um, and computers on Triacme because they teach very well there and you have some rooms there that will help you with this, I will show you. So as you can see here, we have uh, a path that, uh, that is about press security and if you click there you will have for instance this room called the network fundamentals and there you have networking, intro to LAN, OSI model, packets and frames among other things and you also have how the web works. However, not all the content is free but there is a lot of uh, free resources out there and uh, you have a YouTube channel that is called Eli the Computer Guy you have also Network Chuck, The Cyber Mentor, uh, Hackersploit. I will leave the links down below. My second step is learn how to code. And this is because if you know how to code, you can write scripts, you can uh, uh, write tools, you can automate tasks, among other things. Well, I, I will not talk a lot about why you should know how to code because I did uh, a video about this, why you should learn how to code and I will leave the link down below if you are curious and want to know more about it. Um, so take a look. Now, I'm personally learning Python because it's a beginner friendly language and this means that it's easy to understand. So, um, and it's also widely used, so a lot of people use this uh, ling programming language, okay? That and it has extensive libraries, uh, for instance, for network programming, for exploit development, among other things, okay? So, the plan is to start with basics and then move up to more complex uh, topics, okay? Now, I'm, uh, I followed a beginner uh, course at Free code camp, if I'm not mistaken, and I will leave the, uh, the link in the commentary section down below so you have access to it. But I will show you on YouTube. Let's see. And this is the course that I followed uh, when I didn't know nothing. Um, this is a complete course, so in this course, you will learn a lot of things. So, this is the basic, okay, guys? This guy that is teaching uh, all of this talks very well so it's easy to understand to follow and you will have mini projects in the end so you can practice what you've learned okay now if you finish this uh, course and you want to know more of course that you always can search for um, more videos about it but uh, what I do is to uh, basically apply all the knowledge that 
I gained with this course uh, two little projects uh, like for instance a basic calculator of course and you can go from there uh, to more complex projects and I also practice on Ekerank everything I learned in this way I consolidate uh, all my knowledge okay guys I hope I'm making sense if not leave a comment and I will try to answer your questions of course my third step is learn about OSs and virtualization and uh, first let's talk about OSs. So why should I uh, know more about OSs? Well, when I say know more about OSs, I'm talking about file permissions, command line, security features and others, okay guys? Now, this is important because, for example, Windows uh, has specific ways of handling uh, permissions in the registry management while Linux relies on different configurations for sudo permissions and process management, okay? Now, knowing these details allows hackers to identify specific vulnerabilities in uh, each OS. Additionally, proficiency in command line is vital and this is because many hacking tools and techniques are command line based, okay? And these are just a few reasons why you should know your way around uh, OS, okay? Now let's talk about why you should know more about virtualization. So, knowing more about virtualization is essential for many reasons. Now, one reason is because as an ethical hacker, you will often need to test techniques, tools and exploits. Uh, in doing this directly on your main system, could cause unintended damage or security breaches. Virtual machines, however, are isolated from uh, the host system, which means you can safely experiment different attacks without affecting your main environment, okay? Another reason is you can create multiple VMs, each uh, one running different OSs, and configured uh, to serve different purposes, such as web servers, database servers and client machines, for instance. These VMs can be networked together to simulate an entire organization's uh, network infrastructure. This simulation capability is incredibly valuable for many reasons. For example, you can attempt to exploit vulnerabilities in a virtual web server and see how the attack propagates through the network to other virtual machines. This is incredible, guys, okay? Now, these are just a few benefits, but of course there's a lot more. Now, to learn about OSs, you can use TriAcme. And as you can see, you have your Linux fundamentals. You will learn a lot about this operating system. And you also have Windows, okay, fundamentals. But, as I told you before, this isn't completely free, but for free resources, you have Eli the computer guy, for instance, Tech with Team, and this is to learn about OSs, okay guys? Now, to learn about virtualization, you have a channel called Virtualization How To, um, and it's very uh, useful, this, uh, this YouTube channel. You also have Network Chuck and David Bombal. But as you know, there are a lot of other options. And if you know uh, some option that I didn't told you here and you know that it's very useful for you, please leave it in the commentary section down below so we can learn with each other, okay? Now, my fourth step is following a uh, hacking process, okay? And what is this, a hacking process? Well, hacking process is a series of steps that ethical hackers follow to find security problems in computer systems. Now, the hacking process is useful for uh, those who want to become an ethical hacker, and this is because it provides a structured approach to identify vulnerabilities. And this is awesome, this process. So, the process that I have, because there's a lot uh, of others that differ from mine, in the process that I have, um, is this one. So, the process starts with reconnaissance and reconnaissance is information gathering. Now, in this step, uh, the hackers collect as much information as they can about the target. And this will help 
them understand what they are dealing with, okay? Now, the next step is scanning. And this is where you use tools to scan the target's network to discover, for instance, open ports, uh, active services, and other technical details, okay? You will discover a lot of information. Next, you have enumeration, which involves connecting to the target system to extract information, such as user accounts, network shares, service configurations, among other things, okay? This step provides a deeper understanding of the internal structure of the target, okay? After enumeration, we have vulnerability analysis, and this is used to identify specific weaknesses uh, within the target system. Then we have exploitation, and this is where hackers use the identified vulnerabilities to gain an authorized access to the systems. Once access is gained, uh, the process moves to post-exploitation. In this step, hackers focus in maintaining uh, access, escalating privileges, and uh, exploring the compromised systems further, okay? Finally, the process concludes with reporting, and this is where uh, ethical hackers compile a detailed report of their findings. Now, I will uh, tell you that to learn this, you can always uh, make a good uh, Google search. However, there are a lot of uh, channels that can help you with this. For instance, uh, uh, you have the Cyber Mentor, you have HackLook, HamSec, um, and others, of course. My uh, fifth step is being organized and staying on track. Now, uh, being organized and staying on track is beneficial for many reasons when you're trying to become an ethical hacker. Firstly, it helps to manage uh, your time effectively, allowing to balance uh, learning, practice, uh, practice and other responsibilities without feeling overwhelmed. Lastly, being organized helps you stay focused and committed to your goals. So, in order to achieve this, so in order for me to be able to be on track and organized, I use Jira to, be, uh, to stay organized, track my progress and manage my tests. Now, to document everything, I use Notion. And this is because Notion offers the versatile documentation capabilities easy organization, customizable templates, among other things. Notion is very useful because, for instance, if you have a template, you will not need extra time to make yours. Of course, that you always can uh, make your adjustments, but you don't need to make it from the scratch, if you know what I mean. Now, for those who stick with me till now, uh, I have a sixth step for you. Um, and this is always practice everything you learn when hacking. For instance, if you learn about SQL injection, you can go, for instance, to Port Swigger to practice SQL injection. And for instance, if you uh, learn about IDOR, you can always go to Hack the Box to practice IDOR uh, and a lot of other platforms that are at your disposal that you can use to learn and practice uh, what you've learned, of course. And uh, I do this because practice uh, reinforces your knowledge, improves your technical skills and prepares you for real world scenarios, okay? Now, to practice what I've learned, I use a lot of platforms, but I will not tell you because I have a video about that and please go uh, see it. Uh, it's my top 7 hacking platforms, so go check out guys, you don't lose anything by uh, seeing uh, this video, I'm sure. Now, uh, let me uh, tell you that when you learn something, please take a note about what you've learned because it's useful. Uh, for instance, if you uh, are solving a box on Egg the Box, and in this box you have a vulnerability that is, for instance, IDOR, okay? If you already solved any challenge about this, you can go to your uh, notes and see what steps uh, you took to, to solve that challenge before that you can apply in this uh, present challenge, because 
if you take notes your life will be always better okay you will have a lot of documentation a lot of steps uh, that you took to solve some exercises that you sometimes can apply in the exercises that you are currently uh, solving okay well that's it guys i hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching uh, by the way and if you liked this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to more content like this and if you have any questions or suggestions i would love to hear from you so leave it in the commentary section down below and uh, well see you next time stay curious stay safe and happy hacking bye bye